Welcome to Tiger Tracks, your home for the best of LSU athletics. And now your hosts, Jordy Hopeberg and Bill Frankens. Well, hello, Tiger fans around the world. How are you? Welcome to Tiger Tracks. Familiar faces, same places. He is the legendary Bill Frankens. I am Jordy Hopeberg. Great to be with you. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, you, you gave me an interesting stat about uh, the sports that are competing for LSU right now and the excellence that they are achieving. It's amazing. It really has been a remarkable spring so far, Jordy. Of the 10 uh, teams competing right now, okay. nine are ranked in the top 25. And also, if you go back a little earlier this semester, of course, men's and women's basketball both right. made the NCAA right. tournament. Uh, women's swimming had one of their best seasons in, in many years. So it's been a great spring semester, but right now we have nine teams in the top 25. And of course, several of those are in the top 10. Yeah. Yeah. Baseball, softball, men's and women's golf, track and field, of course, gymnastics in position wow. for a national championship. Yeah. So it's been a fantastic spring so far. And we hope the weeks to come will bring even more accolades for the Tiger athletes. Well, since last week, met LSU baseball beat the ULL Raging Cajuns in baseball. 10,000 people in attendance. Yeah. Man, a lot of Tiger fans in the Big yeah. Easy. A lot exactly. of Tiger fans. So with that in mind, um, outdoor track and field has begun. Dennis Shaver will join us to give her a preview of the men's and the women's squads. Exactly. They've got a big meet coming up at home. Uh, one of three home meets at mm -hmm. Bernie Moore Stadium this year. The Battle on the Bayou this coming Saturday. The team is fresh off the Texas Relays where they gave some great efforts. Softball feature and Ask Five to Paul Maneri. Can't wait for that one. Next on Tiger Tracks. And as promised, we are back here on Tiger Tracks alongside Bill Frankens. I am Jordy Helper. Got 20 seasons involved with the LSU track and field program. Nine as an assistant. Now his 11th season as the head track and field coach of the men and the women. Our good friend Dennis Shaver, kind enough to join us. Always looking good, healthy, tanned, ready to go. How are you, buddy? It's outdoor track and field. <laughs> yes, You're right. Yeah. Just back from Texas Relays. <laughs> How were the Texas Relays? They're totally awesome. It's a great, great experience for the kids. Great three or four day competition, and and uh, we we were extremely proud of how our kids competed. I'm glad. Uh, nothing against the indoor. I'm old school. I'm like, track and field starts when you go outdoors. Well, I know I that's there, crazy, there, but that's how I believe. Yeah, there's a lot of truth to that, and I think the kids always look forward to it. And certainly, you know, over a lifetime, you really do remember those outdoor track yeah. and field experiences. Yeah. Okay. Dennis, your uh, women's team, first of all, a very young team. And the fa when they go out to the Texas Relays, it's a huge event uh, at the University of Texas and really one of the biggest track and field events in the country, if not the world. Talk about the way those young ladies uh, responded to that atmosphere and how they competed. Well, we were really proud of, 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 of the young team that we have on the women and how they competed at Texas Relays. You know, on Saturday in particular when there's, you know, 28, 30,000 people in the stands, the weather was, was really nice and warm and, and uh, you know, they do it right there. And so it was a great, great opportunity for them to get the kind of experience that's necessary uh, later in the year as we move on to pin relays and as we move on to the championship meets because the, the, the you, you know they naturally feel the the self-imposed pressure mm -hmm. that goes along with that but they they really performed extremely well and certainly there's some some areas at which they know they can make some significant improvement in this early outdoor season you talk about it, it is early and it we're is. talking about end of may into june so there's a long road to hoe as they say uh, and it's a fine line with working, correcting, keeping people healthy, 
and getting them to peak at the right time. And I think that's maybe the biggest challenge you have as a coach. Yes, that's the, that's the biggest key, you know, and the biggest challenge that we have. And, and uh, you know, fortunately, you know, we've been very successful at being able to, yeah. you know, have good two-way communication with our athletes and, and trying to do the right things as we're in this early outdoor season, right. recognizing that, you know, really it's not until we get into the middle of May to the middle of June that you know are going to be the most memorable moments for them in those championship uh, venues. So we're really looking forward to, to taking our time and moving forward, having them prepared for those uh, late championship meets. Gotcha. Dennis, the women uh, did finish in the top 10 indoors, uh, number nine at the indoor national meet. And as we said, we transitioned to outdoors. What is most pleased you? Maybe some, uh, some of the athletes that have really stood out. Well, you know, Tori Bliss, uh, certainly a senior on our squad who, you know, I think maybe the first person ever to throw over 60 feet in the shot indoors and not win. It was a very, very competitive championship and it was a great, uh, you know, it was a great event and it's very competitive going back and forth throwing. But Tori's doing a great job. Then, of course, the younger athletes that we have on the squad also. Uh, you know, Jada Martin, who's a sophomore, Natalia Fryer in the long jump scored at NCAA indoor. And, and hometown product, Micaiah Briscoe is a freshman in her first ever NCAA indoor championship is an All-American and scored for us at the 60 meters. And, and for a freshman to go into that, you know, I always tell the kids, you know, there's over 500 athletes in the 60 meters trying to qualify to go to the <laughs> NCAA indoor. Wow. Only 16 make it. And then when you get there, you got to be in the top eight, you know, and that's a, just a tremendous achievement for a great young lady, Micaiah Briscoe, who's got a, a very bright future in our program. Yeah, we, we talk about football having D, DBU and all that. With yeah. track and field, it's like on the women's side, it's like sprinter you, right? Yeah. We, you know, every year we, you have some superstar. We, we, we've, we've, we've been fortunate because, uh, you know, we've always had the talent and, and so forth that can step up and be very coachable and, and, and improve from year to year, and I know Micaiah's going to do that. You also had a freshman uh, this week uh, be named SEC Athlete of the Week, uh, Deshaun Gordon, uh, who, who's also uh, making a big impact for your program. Yeah, just, uh, you know, that's another person that, you know, goes to the NCAA indoors a freshman, one of those 16 people. And uh, so we're really excited about, about what she's doing. And uh, for her to go to Texas Relays and run a personal best, that was pretty exciting to see that get started for her. Right, well, we've talked a lot about the women. There's the men's side of things. And we'll talk with uh, head coach Dennis Shaver about the men when we return to Tiger Track. Stay with us. Welcome back to Tiger Tracks here on CST as we continue our conversation with LSU track and field coach Dennis Shaver. I've got to ask a technical question. You, you, we talked about speed, and you, you know, you've got to have speed to be recruited by LSU. How do you take that speed and make it even faster as a coach? How do you do that? Well, I think a lot of it, you know, is just, uh, uh, you know, of course, year to year they're getting a, a little bit more physically strong and, okay. and, and better prepared. And, Quite honestly, a lot of the technical changes that occur are a direct result of them just becoming more powerful athletes, okay. and, and I think that's the real key. You know, we're very fortunate to have a great weight training program. So who would you pick, a uh, 60-meter race, Frankes or me? <laughs> who would you put your money uh, on? I, I'm not sure I would put money on either one oh, of you guys. Man. It'd probably end up being a tie or something. You see, and you know you'd put your money on me. I'm taller. Long, anyway, okay, yeah, but back to serious real, stuff. Speaking of real athletes, yes. uh, your, your men's team. Uh, men's wow, team finished, shot. Uh, well, well, well <laughs> your men's team finished number seven indoors. 
Uh, you, you've got a, an outstanding core of veterans back from last year. Let's talk about the way they've progressed and transitioned from indoors to outdoors. You know, uh, they, they really are, are looking forward to championship time already. Those, those senior athletes that we have, uh, Rodney Brown, Aaron Ernest, Quincy Downing, uh, all of those guys, uh, Josh Thompson, who's hurtling extremely well for us this year, it's, it's really rebounded from a subpar year last season. Uh, those guys are all looking forward to it, and, and, and certainly, we, you know, along with the relays that we have, Vernon Norwood, of course, is the NCAA indoor 400 meter champion uh, this past season and, and uh, is very healthy and, and is contributing on both of our relays outdoors, running 4x1 and 4x4, so he's a critical call for us. But they're, they're really excited. Uh, they, they know what it takes. They've been there and they've done it. They know what it takes to be prepared and be ready for the championship season. And I can just already tell the, the chemistry among the group and how focused they all are. Uh, and how supportive they are of one another. And then on top of that, just being very supportive of our young women's squad, which is really important because we really do preach to them that we're really one team and we're out there to support one another. And so uh, their leadership has been and is becoming more and more invaluable to us as far as getting prepared for the championship season. Uh, competition is always intense. Um, home meets. Let's talk about some coming to Bernie Moore this year. What do you have planned for us? Well, we've got three home meets, which are really good, starting with this Saturday, where it's going to be a meet where we've got a lot of Louisiana schools coming, so that's going to be a great okay. opportunity for them to compete at Bernie Moore. And then, of course, our alumni gold meet, which is traditionally always a great, great meet where we've got teams coming all the way from Wisconsin. They're bringing their season squad down this year for us. And then in May 2nd, we'll have a meet where uh, that's going to be um, Alabama, University of Alabama, uh, University of Florida, and the University of Miami coming in for a meet on May 2nd, which will be a real, real good. And, and keep in mind, most all of our outdoor meets are going to be starting at the running events around 1. We're going to be concluded by 4 or 4.30. It's going to be a good, quick presentation. Uh, we do have a few of the field events that will start earlier in the day. Um, as early as about 11 o'clock. So it's, it's, we're trying to keep nice, compact meets, good uh, fan-friendly meets, and, and those are the kind of meets that are best for our squad, and that's the main yeah. reason for us doing that. Also want to mention uh, uh, Rodney Brown also was an SEC Athlete of the Week uh, this past week. Uh, he's made a huge impact for you in the throws. He's doing a tremendous job. He, you know, he uh, most probably don't remember, but last year he was one of the best discus throwers in the country and then had some problems at the NCAA finals and didn't score for our team. So, so he's, he's extremely motivated. And the exciting thing was at Texas Relays where the wind really wasn't that good, Rodney threw 207 feet and he won the event by almost 20 feet. Uh, that wow. just kind of gives you an indication <laughs> wow. of, of, of the kind of athlete he's, he's become and how determined he is. So just meet after meet so far, uh, we've had two outdoor meets. Uh, Rodney's throwing the disc a long way. That's like Secretariat winning the Belmont yeah, it's by 20 exactly feet. Like My that. gosh, it's unbelievable. And I'm still shocked that you're not putting your money on me. Yeah, uh, well, I really am <laughs> shocked. I mean, we need to talk. Uh, Dennis Shaver, we wish you nothing but the best for the long haul yep. with the outdoor season. Thanks thank, for coming back. Thank you, Jordy. Thank you, Bill. All right, we'll take a time out. We'll come back with more here on Tiger Tracks on CST. Tiger Tracks on CST is being brought to you by Capital One Bank, the official bank of all things Louisiana, and by Louisiana Propane Dealers. Get up to $1,200 in rebates on propane accessories. Find out how at louisianapropane.com.
Welcome back to Tiger Tracks. If you don't have those pictures in the circle, you can't win in softball. LSU does. LSU softball is 32-3. and three. Ooh. Big reason is because of a fantastic group of pitchers, the Fantastic Four. Oh. Garrett Walbert had a chance to talk to these young ladies. Let's check it out. A powerful force, steeped in wonder. Heroes of unlimited strength and skill. A team of mystery and might. Behold, I give you the Fantastic Four. The 2015 LSU pitching staff has combined to win 32 of their first 35 games, leading the league with the lowest team earned run average in the Southeastern Conference. The Tigers have given up the fewest hits and runs scored while pounding the zone for the second most strikeouts in the SEC. What's even more remarkable is that all four pitchers in the rotation are underclassmen. Two freshmen and two sophomores round out a staff that's already secured series wins against number six Oklahoma and number one Florida. One place on the SEC stat sheet you won't find the players' names is most appearances and innings pitched. Coach Torina's ability to equally spread the workload has been the secret to their success. Freshman Carly Hoover leads the Tigers with 79 strikeouts while opponents are hitting just 203 against her. The South Carolina native understands the power of the Fantastic Four and how game planning for them can be a nightmare. We have four pitchers that are capable of beating anyone in the country. And um, to know that we're going <laughs> to we're going to go into a weekend and prepare for one pitcher the whole weekend, and another team's going to go into our weekend and prepare for four. Like, can you really do that? What, like practice one pitcher a day? You, you really can't prepare. And we're all very different, and we're all very versatile. And I think that's what makes us even stronger, is that like one can't be great without the other ones. Like, Allie throwing her off speed makes my fastball speed that much more effective. And I don't think people really understand that, and I don't think they're going to until they play us. She you know, throws at a speed that many of us have never even seen before um, and is truly probably the best competitor I've ever been around. Wants the ball in the big game, even to the point that she'll ask me for it. And um, it, it's fun being able to hand it to somebody that you know wants to be out there so bad and just wants to win. And I'm so confident in her because I know no matter what, she doesn't have her best stuff, she does whatever, she's going to find a way to win on that day. Bailey Corbello was LSU's leader in wins, ERA, and strikeouts last season as a rookie and earned all SEC honors in the process. Bailey's improvement from freshman to sophomore year has been impressive as number 19 now leads the league with a .99 ERA and sports an 8-0 record. Bailey is a believer in Coach Torina's one-team philosophy. Being a part of the Fantastic Four is, uh, it's, it's an honor, honestly, like, you know, people to even put us in that category, but, you know, we still think of ourselves as one team and we don't try to set ourselves apart like the pitchers and the rest of the team, but uh, it's very, I mean, we're fortunate enough to have people even think of us as being that kind of, you know, quartet or that kind of, um, that ability, you know. And so, but I feel like, uh, you know, we still think of ourselves as one team and we're not trying to set ourselves apart. I don't know of any other school or any other program in the country right now that has four pitchers that could be a number one on any other team. Uh, we have the luxury to have, you know, four number ones, four aces that are able to do so many different things in so many different ways, uh, which makes it really nice because it's hard to prepare for our staff. Allie Wall Jasper raced out to a 9-0 record this season, setting a school record for the best start by a freshman in LSU history. The California native appreciates the competitive nature of her teammates. Being like one or two of the only good players on the high school team and not having a lot of people care about being out there and just being, having, being fun and games, it was kind of irritating, but then when I came here, everybody has one goal and it's all of the same goals. We're always working hard together. We're always being by each other's side and the competition obviously is way better and it's just you learn so much more. She's you know the one that was the big recruit the one everybody wanted we fought hard to get her and wow we got lucky that we did because she has proven to be everything that she was billed to be. Um, just another one that you don't notice what a competitor she is because she's so quiet but whatever the situation is she looks exactly the same game on the line bases loaded or nobody out first pitch of the game she's just ice water in her veins. You know, she's been really fun for me to watch as a coach. Kelsey Selman is undefeated at 7-0 and already has as many strikeouts as she did all of last season. Selman loves the family atmosphere at LSU and enjoys working towards a common goal. I mean, we all have our own strengths and so, and our own weaknesses, so when we're working on whatever we need to work on, we all push each other and if I need to work on my changeup, Bailey can help with my changeup along with Coach Beth, but that, there's just different ways we can help each other and 
just knowing, another thing is just knowing that if I can't do it, I know one of them could easily back me up and do even better. So that's just one of the big advantages of having them there with me. Coach Beth does a really good job of controlling all of the different personalities that we have, especially with the Fantastic Four. Um, I mean, she was a pitcher herself in the SEC. She knows exactly how our pitchers need to act and react and how to play. She knows how competitive it is. Um, she does a really good job of knowing each pitcher's personality, and she, I, I think she takes that as her job very, very seriously, too. From Carolina to California and Lufkin to Lake Charles, the Fantastic Four now call LSU Woo! home. With any luck, their superhero exploits will shine brightly for years to come, just like the pages of a comic book. Reporting for Tiger Tracks, I'm Garrett Walbert. Fantastic Four, Beth Torino with a wealth of riches. Which really does, and LSU plays host to Ole Miss this weekend at Tiger Park, a big Easter weekend full of activities. Go out and check out the Tigers as they take on the Rebels. Ask Five, Paul Maneri, next on Tiger Tracks. Tiger Tracks on CST is being brought to you by Capital One Bank, the official bank of all things Louisiana. And by Louisiana Propane Dealers. Get up to $1,200 in rebates on propane accessories. Find out how at louisianapropane.com. Welcome back to Tiger Tracks. Normally we have an Ask Five segment for university professors, but today we go find the inner Paul Maneri. That's right. Coach Maneri agreed to meet with university relations and give a little inside look at some of his philosophies on coaching oh. and on life. Let's take a look. Well, it's pretty hard not to say the 2009 National Championship because obviously that's what everybody strives to do. You know, to culminate with a National Championship is every coach, every player's dream. But i got to tell you this, too. I'm equally as proud of the fact that in my time here, I think we've counted 82 players that have finished their collegiate career here at LSU. Virtually all of them have either earned a college degree from LSU or are in currently in professional baseball. Many of them have done both. So I'm proud of the fact that they've prepared themselves to become a success after their, their baseball careers have ended. It would probably be Joe DiMaggio because I consider Joe DiMaggio the greatest baseball player in the history of the sport. Being an Italian American, I guess I'm a little bit biased. And uh, you know, I just heard my dad talk about him growing up so much that to share his thoughts on the game would be amazing. But if I had an opportunity to just sit down with anybody in the world just for, for a day, uh, I'd just love to sit and talk with my own father. You know, he, uh, he's been my mentor, he's been my guide uh, through my entire life, you know, as a young boy all the way through my profession. And, and anytime I get to sit and talk with him about it, really any topic, uh, 
I'm a better person for it. Well, I have to tell you, the, the, the favorite place for me on campus, every time I go by the student union, I think of that very spot where I met a girl 35 years, well actually 39 years ago. I've been married to her for 35 years. I met her when I was a freshman at LSU in the fall of 1975, right outside of the student union. So every time I go by the student union, I think of that moment that really kind of changed my life. I met Karen Ann Fegis, and now she's Karen Maneri and the mother of our four children. And uh, so every time I go to the student union, it brings back special memories for me. Well, if I could spend one day uh, by choice anywhere in the world, of course, it would be at TD Ameritrade Park in Omaha, Nebraska, playing for the national championship because that's obviously the pinnacle of what we're shooting for each and every year. But the thing about it, you know, a fan can buy a ticket to the game, but to be there as a coach and as a player, you have to earn your way there. And it's not easy. There's a lot of great teams in the country, and uh, you have to fight your way there. But if you get there and you're on that field and you're playing for the national championship, a tremendous accomplishment and representing LSU, you put that jersey on over your head and it says Tigers or LSU across the front, you're representing an entire state, obviously a great university, and it gives you an awful lot of motivation to win that last game of the year. Well, I love purple because there's nothing like the spirit of LSU. I think if you could bottle the spirit of LSU, you could light up the world. Uh, all you have to do is go to a football game on a Saturday at Tiger Stadium and you can see uh, the spirit of this wonderful university and this wonderful state alive and, and, and as clear as anything. And then of course I live gold because the standard at LSU is excellence. We are always shooting to be the best in everything that we do. I tell recruits all the time, don't come to LSU if you're afraid because it's not for the faint of heart. You have to come here if you expect to be the very best. If you want to be good as a student, as a person, as an athlete, you should go somewhere else. If you want to be great, come to LSU. So there you have it. We know a little bit more about Coach Paul Madera. I want to wish you and your family a very happy Thank Easter you. holiday. Same to, you. Same to you. Exactly. Looking forward to it. Definitely. All right. Have fun in Tuscaloosa. I will. Until next time, <laughs> he's Bill. I'm Jordy. Happy Easter to you as well. Go Tigers. We'll see you next week on Tiger Tracks. Thank <laughs> you.